some planning orbital reconstruction and rhinoplasty for this patient. You can see he sustained a road traffic accident and he just got some post-traumatic deformity. You see the orbital dystopia to a certain extent and his radix is also a little bit on the inferior side and his nose is broad so we're going to correct that the main work is going to be around the orbit so i've got stereolithographic models done so i've got the planning and we've got the implants fabricated on them okay look up a little bit and so we're going to approach the orbital floor and the rim and then do the reconstruction and also do a rhinoplasty at the same time hi we're about to start this orbital reconstruction case so I've got the stereographic models of this patient. This is the one that's before, this is the one we need to go to. So we've already designed what needs to be done on the computer, taken a printout, designed an implant, fabricated the implant and the implant is ready with us. And this patient sustained a road traffic accident. This was few months ago because of which his orbital symmetry has been changed. He has what is called as a slight orbital dystopia and a minimal anophthalmosis on the left side. So basically, I'm going to reconstruct the orbit, the left orbit. We're going to do orbital flow reconstruction, orbital wall reconstruction with a pre made 3D custom fabricated implant. This implant I'm going to fix in the patient. This is the first step of the procedure. Secondly, we're also going to do a rhinoplasty for him because in the accident, he also had an issue with the nasal dorsum. His dorsum has become flat and his nose has become broad. So I'm going to narrow the dorsum, increase the height, the vertical height, and also reduce the ala. So that's the plan for this patient. These models have helped us to design the implants pre-operatively. This saves a lot of time, but also helps us to get that perfect meticulous result up to a millimeter right now in perfection. Okay, you can have a look uh, at the patient. Now, obviously, you cannot see that there's a huge difference. And that's one of the reasons why we've used this computer assisted stereolithographic models and 3D printing of the plates. Now, there's a scar you can see there. It's not very nice, but that's the infrabital scar that the earlier surgeon has used. I'm going to use the same scar because he has it anyways. And I'm also going to try and reduce that scar in the process. All right, so it's going to be an infraorbital approach because he has a scar. Otherwise, the ideal approach would be a subconjunctival approach with a lateral canthoplasty approach. So, you see, that's the earlier implant that we're reaching out now. So, I'm going to remove this. And then we have to augment the orbit. And I'm using an already existing scar. The earlier surgeon has used an infraorbital approach. It's not the ideal approach, but since that was used, I'm using it now. I'm going slowly into the orbital rim. You see that screw? I'm going to expose. Slowly. Give me the elevator. That's the orbital mesh that's been kept on the orbital floor, infraorbital rim. We've removed the implant from there. And the implant cutting it, show me the implant. So we remove this. 
and six plates, six screws from there. Now I'm going to dissect the entire orbital floor before we can remove this and then reconstruct. Give me a larger um, copper marble. So I've just finished doing the orbital reconstruction for this patient who had anophthalmosis and orbital dystopia, meaning the size of the eye was a little bit smaller on the right, on the left side compared to that on the right. He had a post-traumatic reason, so he had an accident, following which he had a surgery done primarily elsewhere, and then that resulted this injury, this defect. Sorry. Now you can see made an implant that is curved, according to the mirror image on the normal side. And I've just fixed it on the outside and you'll see it goes quite a long way inside almost the orbital base extending. The interesting thing to note here or the important thing to note here rather is a gap here that you have that you see that's the gap. I've left that gap because that's the gap uh, that is ideal for the orbital volume to be reduced to correct the lower placed eye is now going to be moved up and also the size of the eye the globe is going to be bigger because we've reduced the volume and how did we decide that it has to be this particular measurement thanks to the CAD CAM designing 3D computer printing that we've been so precise with this this section is very important you see this is the muscles I've left this is the orbicularis oculi and then inside you can see a little bit of blisters of orbital fat but it has to be on top of this layer. Everything is intact and on top. And you know, you can see this all the way down. It's hard for me to retract more than this and show you. But yes, there's probably, you can see more now as I move posteriorly. Okay. So just completed suturing now. As I mentioned earlier, I've used this approach because there was a scar in the same place which the earlier surgeon had used to approach the orbital floor and then for vital rim. So after reconstruction, I've got a muscle layer inside. Now we've closed up. You can look at the other side and see the symmetry. Take a little up, please, yeah. So you can see there's a hollowing there, there's a hollowing there. We've got the globe almost in similar position now. So, 
I think we've got excellent uh, reconstruction of the orbit.